Hello everyone and welcome to another Blender Made Easy tutorial. Today we'll be creating this snaking particle animation. The idea for this tutorial was actually from the Rings of Power intro shot right here. I thought it looked pretty cool so we're going to recreate it in Blender. To do this we're going to be using the molecular add-on for the particle system. This allows us to interact the particle systems together and have physics. This add-on is like super cool and it allows you to create so many unique and interesting animations. Definitely check it out in the link in the description. Once you have it downloaded, you can go over to edit, down to your preferences, and then install the add-on right here. Once you've done that, type in the search bar molecular and you should see it right there. Make sure that is enabled and then also while we're here, let's do the extra uh, mesh objects right here. Make sure that is enabled as well. This is what we're going to be using to create all of the rocks and pebbles. Next up, let's go ahead and delete the default cube and then press Shift A, we'll add in the rock generator. If we open up this panel down here, we can change all of the different settings to affect how our rock looks. Since there's going to be a lot of particles, we need to make sure the detail and display level is very low, so make sure both of those are set down to 1. Let's bring up the number of rocks to 4 so we have different variations, and then we can just move them off to the side. If you don't like how one of the rocks looks, you can delete it and then add in a new rock. For example, I don't really like how this one looks, so I'm going to delete that and then just add in a new rock. We'll open up this panel, we'll set the number of rocks to 1, and if you uncheck Use Random Seed, you can scroll through here until you find something that you like. I think that one looks pretty cool, so we're going to leave it right there and just drag it over this way. We'll select all of them, right click, and shade them smooth. What we're going to be doing is having two different collections of rocks so we can add in different materials to each particle system. So we'll select all of them, press M and move them to their own collection. We'll call it Rocks 1. Then what we can do is select this uh, collection right here, right click and then click on Duplicate Collection. We'll call this one Rocks 2. With that done, make sure you select your original collection so it doesn't add the uh, other objects to the rock collection. Next, we'll press Shift A and we'll add in the container for all of the particles. We'll just add in a cube and if we go into the Dimensions tab over here in the Properties by hitting N, we'll set the X and Y to a value of 6 and then the Z will drag, we'll bring this lower to a value of 0.35. If we go into Front View, this is what it looks like. That is looking pretty good. We'll drag it onto the grid floor and then we'll press Shift A and add in a circle. We'll rotate the circle 90 degrees along the X axis scale it down until it matches the height of the other container. That looks pretty good. And then we'll drag it over here. Next up, let's create the outline. You can use whatever outline you want. If you want to type in a letter or a logo, use whatever you like. For this tutorial, I'm actually going to be using the Blender logo. So just go into Google and find the Blender logo and then click and drag an image in. I'm going to go over to the image panel right here and turn down the opacity so it's not as bright. And then I'll scale it up so it matches the box right here. I think that is pretty good. And then also we'll scale down this object so it's a little bit smaller. Something like that is probably good. Now to create the outline, let's add in a curve and then add in a bezier curve object. Go into edit mode and then all we really need to do is just start tracing out the logo. So right about here, we're going to move these points right there. Select the different points, press E to extrude, rotate, and just place it along the curve going all the way around. Once you get up to this point right here, what we're going to do is actually smooth out the corner because once we animate the particles following this curve, it's going to be a very harsh transition right on this corner. So instead, we're just going to smooth it out. Select this point, press E to extrude, and make this corner nice and smooth. Something like that is probably good. And then just repeat this for the rest of the corners. And there we go, we've now traced out the logo, so we can go ahead and delete that image. Next up, we'll place our circle right in this position, rotate it, and then place it right about there. Make sure you go into edit mode and press F to fill in a face, and then also make sure this curve is up so it's right in the middle of the circle. 
And with this circle, we're gonna be using it to create the particle system. Speaking of particles, I've actually created an entire class on that subject over on Skillshare. It's called the Beginner's Guide to the Particle System in Blender. It covers the particle system in an in-depth and easy to understand way. We go over all of the settings and there's a couple of hands-on projects as well. You should definitely check it out. And since Skillshare is sponsoring this video, you can take this class and thousands of others for free for an entire month. If you didn't know, Skillshare is an online platform where you have unlimited access to learn whatever you want at any time. They have classes on Blender, Photoshop, VFX, video editing, just to name a few. They're usually about 40 to 60 minutes and there's no ads so you can watch and learn without any interruptions. If you are a creative person or if you're trying to learn a new skill, Skillshare is the perfect place for you. So click the link in the description and get your free month. And while you're there, you should definitely check out my nine other classes on Blender. Thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to the tutorial. Select your circle, go over to the particle system tab, and then create a new one by hitting that plus sign. We're going to set the start frame to 50 and the end frame to 500. The reason we're setting it to 50 is so the other particle system, this cube right here, has time to settle before this particle system gets emitted. So 50 and 500 is good. The lifetime controls how fast it's going to go along the curve. And to actually get them to follow, select your curve, go over to the physics panel, enable force field, and set the type over to curve guide. The minimum distance right here controls where it's going to grab the particle system. Make sure this is a little bit lower so it just fills out that circle. With that done, go back over to your circle particle system. We'll set the number to 15,000. That's a good number right there. And now if we play our animation, once it reaches frame 50, you can see they go all the way around. And the lifetime controls how fast it goes around. Let's set this higher so it's slower. We'll go with a value of about 430. I think that is a good number. So once it reaches frame 50, we can see the speed right there. Again, if you want it faster, lower this value. If you want it slower, make this value higher. We're gonna go over to the render panel right here, switch it from render as halo to render as collection. And then for the instant collection, we'll select rocks one. We can see them right there and that is looking pretty good, but they are all rotated the right way. So let's give it some randomness. Open up the rotation, we'll turn the phase and the random phase all the way up to one. So now once we restart, it's gonna have a lot more random rotation and that's gonna look a lot better. For the scale of this, let's go up to a value of 0.075 and enter, and then the random size will drag up to a value of 0.2 just to give it some variation. Down here in the timeline, let's also set this to 500. Next up, let's add in the collision for the other object so the particles don't just fall into 3D space. We'll select this cube right here, press shift D, and then scale it up just slightly so it's bigger, just like that. And then also go into the front view, scale it along the Z so it's a little bit taller, and drag it up right about there. If we go into edit mode, we can delete this top face. So go into face select mode, delete that top face, then head over to the physics panel, enable collision. We'll set the dampening, which controls the bounces of the particles. We'll drag that to 0.9, and then for the friction, we'll also drag up to around 0.4 or so. And then also one more thing you need to do is press Control A and apply the scale to your object. Do this for the particle system as well. Apply the scale, we'll select the circle, Control A and apply the scale. For this other particle system, select it, head over to the particle system tab, hit the plus sign to create a new one. For the start and end, we'll set both of these values to one. And if this happens, just restart the timeline and it should fix itself just like that. The lifetime, we're gonna go up to 500, so it lasts the entire animation. And then underneath the source, instead of emitting from the faces, we're actually gonna emit from the volume. And then underneath this distribution, we're gonna switch it over to grid. And then the resolution controls how many particles there are gonna be. Let's go all the way up to 120. This is gonna give us a lot of particles. Underneath the velocity tab, make sure the normal is set to zero so they don't move at the start of the animation. And then also we'll check the uh, rotation. We'll give it some random phase right here, just like that. And then in the render panel right here, we're gonna switch it over to collection. And then for the instant collection, we'll select rocks two, which is the other collection. And there we go, that is looking pretty good. You might notice though that our viewport has slowed down quite a bit. So to fix that, just open up the viewport display and set the amount lower while we are working in the viewport. 
Before we continue on, let's go back over to the circle particle system and we can see here there is a collision object. Make sure you open up the physics panel underneath deflection, you select a different collection because right now the particles are actually gonna collide with this object, which is not what we want. We want it to pass through and just continue on. So for the collision collection, select rocks two, which does not have a collision object in it. So nothing is going to collide. Same thing for the force field, select this particle system here, Underneath the view, underneath the field weights, set the effector collection to something else. Let's just go with rocks two once again. So now this force field is not going to interact with this particle system. For the size of these rocks, we're gonna set the random up to 0.2. And then for the scale of them, we're actually gonna bring this lower. Once we do, once we bake this in, we'll bring the size back up to match this circle particle system. But if we have it at 0.5, the particles are too close together, so they're all gonna just fly out. So set the scale of this down to 0.025, and that should be pretty good. If we scroll down here to the molecular tab, we can start to simulate all of the particles. We'll open up the simulate and the density and the collision. So for the start and end frame, it's already good. For the sub steps, we're gonna go up to six. This will just give us some more sub steps in the animation to give us more accurate simulations. For the density, we're gonna switch it over to sand. And then for the collision, make sure you turn on self collision and collision with others. So now the particle system will collide with itself and it will collide with the circle particle system. The friction and dampening will values will go up to 0.4 for each of them. And that should be pretty good. Let's go back over to our circle particle system, scroll down to the molecular, we'll turn it on. The density, we will go with sand, and then make sure you turn on activate collision with others. Since it's going to be using the force field, we don't need to have self collision, only the collision with others. And then for the, fr and then for the friction and damping, we'll go up to 0.4. With that done, we are ready to bake it in. Select your main particle system, go up to the viewport display and set that back up to 100%. Then we can click on start molecular simulation. If the particle systems fly outwards, that means that the particles are too dense and the size is too big. So lower the size and then start simulating it again. We can see they are not flying outwards, so that is perfect. And now we're gonna let this bake out and then we continue on with this tutorial. All right, the particle system has finished baking out, so let's check it out. If we go through here, we can see all of the particles are interacting with each other and this snaking effect is working perfectly. And there we go, that looks pretty cool. At this point, we're gonna scale up the particle system now to match the original. So we'll scroll up here to the render and switch it from 0.3 to let's go 0.75. What I'm also gonna do is underneath the viewport display, I'm gonna set it down to 5% so we can actually move around our viewport a lot smoother and it's not gonna lag our scene. There we go. Next up, let's hide some of the other objects. So for this object here, we're gonna make sure show emitter is turned off so it doesn't show up in the render. Also, you can turn off show emitter in the viewport as well so you don't see the cube. Next up, let's create the materials. So since we have this particle system right here using the rocks of one collection, we'll open up this panel and select one of the rocks. Head over to the shading workspace up at the top here and now we can create the material. So with the rocks one selected, we'll click on new to create a new material. And what we want to do is actually randomize a lot of these different colors. We can do this using the object info node. So go underneath input and go over to the object info node. We can take the random value and this will randomize a color for each of these different objects. If we plug this into a converter color ramp, we can then control this. So what I'll do is I'll take the random, I'll plug it into the factor, and then the color is gonna go into the base color. We also need to apply the same material to the rest of the objects. So I'm gonna hold shift and select rock four, and that will select all of the ones in between. I'll press control L and click on materials. So now you can see all of these have different colors. We can come over here to the color ramp and change it however we like. So what I'm gonna do is have the Blender logo in orange color, and then the rocks right here are gonna have a blue color. So what I'll do is I'll just select an orange color, something like this, and then here we'll give it a darker orange color, somewhere around here, just to give some random variation. And there we go, that looks pretty nice. You can play around with these colors until you find something that you like. For the other rocks, we're gonna select rock two, and then hold shift, select rock 007, create a new material. 
Control L, and then Link Materials. And so now all of those will share this exact same material. Again, all we need to do is just add in the object info node, add in a color ramp, and then play around with the color. Plug in the random and then the color into the base color. And then for the colors, again, we're gonna be using a blue color, but you can use whatever colors that you want. Oh, and one more thing, make sure to set the start frame to 50 so you don't render those extra frames as the particle system is settling down. And there we go. At this point, you can just select a render engine, set up some render settings like some ambient occlusion if you're rendering an EV, or in cycles, you can add some depth of field, make it look however you like. In my scene right here, I've animated the camera moving around, I've added in some animation for the depth of the field so it focuses in on certain parts of the uh, mesh as the animation is going on, and it looks really nice. Here is the final result. So there we go. If you create something really cool from this tutorial, I would love to see it, so make sure to send it to me on Instagram at BlenderMadeEasy, and thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. If you guys have other suggestions for tutorials you'd like to see, let me know in the comments down below. But that is going to be it. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you in the next one.